Hello, hello, and happy Wednesday, everyone. So glad to be with you today. I am a little under the weather, but still ready to rock and roll today. Want to get our learn on as usual. This is the channel where we talk about confident and caring communication skills in leadership, in interpersonal communication, and in public speaking. Today, we are talking about our emotional toolkit and how we can build powerful tools inside of that toolkit. When we're hungry, we know to get something to eat. When we need to put a nail in the wall, we know to grab a hammer. But sometimes we grab the wrong tool for the wrong job, right? It would be weird if a carpenter grabbed a wrench to cut a piece of wood, to cut a piece of trim. Yet emotionally, we sometimes do that very same thing. Right? When we know to pay attention to certain things, but processing our emotions can be very difficult. And so that's what we are here today to talk about. And I wanna break it down into five categories. And I have guests coming throughout the stream as well, which I'm very thankful for. The five categories we're gonna break these tools down into are physical, recreational things like play, leisure, connection, mindfulness, and the fifth one is education. So we're going to, I'm gonna give you a few examples now but I want to give a shout out to Coco in the chat who was kind enough to let me know that my mic was not muted at the beginning of the stream. Really appreciate that, right? Good looking out. So let me give you some examples and then our guests are going to share their favorite tool throughout the stream. So we have Lara is our first guest joining us. So I'm popping, going to bring Lara on with us. Hello, Lara. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. It is a pleasure. And I'm excited for you to share what your favorite emotional tool is for your toolkit. So you're a public speaking student in my class this semester, which the semester has ended. And your persuasive speech was quite memorable because you were talking about reframing. So I wanted to open up the conversation here with you to share a little bit about your method I know you even gave it a really great title and your speech was fantastic. And I thought this would be a fabulous tool to bring up now. So go ahead, Lara, take it away. Share with us your tool. Yeah, of course. So I created a tool for my speech called the ABC method. It's something that's really easy to remember when it comes to reframing. And it's something that I use in my daily life. So the A stands for assess the situation. Um, what are the facts and what are the emotions that are going on? And B stands for breathe in and breathe out. Um, it reminds me to make sure I'm taking a deep breath in and a deep breath out to clear my head and make sure I know what's going on at the moment. And C stands for check yourself before you wreck yourself. And an important question that I like to ask myself during that moment is if I would say the same kind of negative thoughts or negative self-talk to a friend. And most of the time, I would never say anything like that to them. So that ABC method is really helpful in my life, and I hope it would be also helpful in yours. Thank you so much for sharing there, Lara. I appreciate it. Side note, I accidentally put up Ryan's name while you were talking, so I don't know if that, th if that threw you off at all. So I'm going to blame it on my head cold here for that. But you know that you're Lara. I know that you're Lara. And I love your ABC method, right? That first one is to kind of stop and think about what's going on here. The breathing, it's so basic. It's so simple. We need to do it to survive. Yet, under these emotional circumstances, we can totally forget the power of some deep breathing. And then, of course, I love this one because it's totally a reference to my genre, my age group growing up here. You know, ch chickity check yourself before you wreck yourself. I love that. And as a reminder, the, the tools that we're talking about in these five categories, physical, recreational connection, mindfulness, and education, yours falls into this fourth tool, mindfulness. There, and there can be many types of mindfulness tools. And I know some of my other guests today are going to share mindfulness tools. But in particular, I remember when you shared on in, in class how the, the specific situation where this 
where it helped you. Can you think of a time where you didn't do this and it caused some stress in your life? Yeah, I think most of the time when I let stress overwhelm me, especially during the semester where things can get really hectic and I get caught up in everything, when I don't get the chance to step back and assess the situation, breathe in and breathe out and check myself before I wreck myself, those are the times where I really can't and I don't know what's going on. So I really need reframing in my life. And at least for me, I know it's really helpful. So I hope for everyone else, it can also be a helpful tool to work on your mindfulness. Without a doubt. I mean, I think the thing is to remember to do it in the moment because there's no doubt that this will help. But that's why I love having these conversations and sharing, whether it's in the classroom or online too, being able to remind people that we have tools that we can put in our emotional toolkit to really help us when we're experiencing those emotions. So Lara, thank you very much for stopping by today. I know you're in final season, so I want to wish you the best and remind you to do these things too and also to celebrate and have a really great time this holiday season. Thank you so much. You too as well. Thank you for joining. Of course. Okay, guys, so that is Lara sharing that really awesome tool. Next up for you is my colleague, Lori, who is a coach. She works at uh, Neuro Linguistic Programming. She helps people just live a better life, right, through her coaching skills. And she was not able to join us today live, but she did submit a video. So let's check out her message here. Tatiana, I want to thank you for inviting me to join in on this conversation about emotional tools. The emotional tool that is one of my favorites is kind of a combo tool and it comes in handy when you find yourself in a situation where you are reacting instead of responding because we have to deal with people which is a beautiful thing and then there's those times where it's like we have to deal with people and we're not in control of their behavior which is so unfortunate at times and when we get into one of those times someone may say something or we have an interaction where it just pushes our buttons and we go from zero to pissed off in half a second. Can I say pissed off on your show? I'm not sure if I can, but edit that out maybe if I can't. Anyway, during those times, and you know what I'm talking about when you have those interactions, it is important to unpack our emotions. And so what I like to do for an emotional tool is, usually it's after the fact, write out the three emotions that I'm experiencing because of that interaction. And I say it's a combo tool because the first part is identifying three emotions. The second part is writing it out. Because even if you identify it in your head, it can still swirl around and it's mixed in with the conversation that happened and what was that person thinking and that person thinks this, that, and the other thing and what I'm thinking about. Anyway, it just, it cuts down on the swirl effect of all that stuff going on in your head. So get out a piece of paper and a pen, write it down. Or if you don't have a paper and pen, like get your phone, put it in your notes app just to sort it out and see the three emotions that you experience there. And to, help out a little bit, I'd like to say that anger, yes, is an emotion. And I encourage you to unpack that because anger is usually a secondary emotion. Underneath anger is usually some type of fear and or sadness. So pick that out if you're angry. Figure out, um, you know, if there was fear involved, what are you fearful of? If there was sadness involved, what are you sad about that situation? Anyway, write down three emotions, write them down, get them out of your head, and trust me, this will help you process things a lot better. I have used this tool countless times. I use it with my private coaching clients. I use it with um, advising my young adult son or my nephew, other young adults, and even friends that are in situations, and I help them 
slow down after they're telling me the situation that they reacted to and go through this process. Just tell me what are three emotions that you felt, pick them out. And then, you know, they, it takes a minute. It does to slow down and figure out those emotions. I have used it with myself because there are times when, like I said, I just get balled up and I become speechless and I need to fall back and regroup. And when I fall back and regroup, this is my go-to tool to help me figure out what are my emotions regarding that. And then it's easier to process and do whatever I need to do after that. So there it is. That's my favorite emotional tool. Identify your three emotions and write them out. Get them out of your head because stuff's swirling in your head. That gets you stuck in swirly mode. No one likes swirly mode. We want to get out of swirly mode. So anyway, I look forward to the rest of this conversation. Thank you very much, Lori, for sending me over your message via video. And what Lori is telling us is two things, identifying it and writing it down. And I think it can be very hard to identify. Sometimes we miss that as the first step. We, we get emotional hijacking happening in our brain. But can we press the pause button and say, I feel, we can use tools like the emotional feelings wheel. What is it that I'm experiencing right now? So I, I agree with her, identifying is huge, that's really important. And then writing it, writing it down is really important. So if you wanna connect with Lori, I wanna share her link, trueyouinaction.com. And of the five tools that we're talking about, hers also, like Lara's, relates to mindfulness, right? The act of thinking through these things, and in this case, being able to label it, identify it, to name it. You've ever heard that expression, name it to tame it? That happens. And then whether you write it down on your phone, write it down in your journal, there is something powerful that happens when we take those words and put them down on paper rather than letting them just tinker around in our minds. So there you have it. That is the next tool. And then next up, we have a guest who's going to come and talk to us about a recreational type of one. His name is Will. He'll be joining us shortly. And just to, to give you a heads up, he is actually going to be joining us and talking about video and gaming and how that he uses that as an emotional tool. So I know he should be connecting with us very soon. But in the meantime... While we, while we get Will online here, let's review these, these five tools that we're talking about. Physical. Some of these physical things, and I do have a guest coming on later who is going to be talking to us about physical things such as exercise, yoga, stretching. And in this case, we're looking for a quick release with, with the physical, with category one. Like something is happening right now and we need to let that emotion out. So quick release things like if you're a runner going for a run, I am not a runner, but certainly some type of exercise. It could even be dancing. You know, sometimes it's more of a slower thing like a bath or a shower. So those are the things that you will want to consider. So let me see. Coco, just want to let you know, I believe it should be in your text message. That link, let me just do a quick check in. For that, in sec. Now let me. Okay, so I'm just gonna send the link to our next guest to make sure that he has that handy. Okay, and all right, guys. So give me one second to be able to do that. I'm going to copy. Will, this is coming to you shortly. Thank you for being on standby with me. And I am sending it to your phone. Okay, so that has been sent to you. So you can come on in and join the call as soon as you're ready. So we're talking about physical. The first one, uh, any type of physical activity that gets us ready to, that helps us process the emotion. Second are re recreational things, which is what Will's going to come to talk to us about in the way that he handles that. And hey, Lion, just want to give you a shout out while we're here. I see your comment in the chat. Okay, no diggity, no doubt. Yep, yep. <laughs> you know what we're talking, what we were talking about at the time. So recreational things are games, 
any kind of games, board games, video games, it could even be sports. And some things overlap, like sports games, obviously connect also to physical. So I am going to get our next guest online here. Will, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, hi, how are you doing today? Hopefully you're doing really well. I am feeling better, which is great. You know, I'm dealing with this cold. I know you have been too, so thank you for coming on. Crazy. It it has been. And so I know I know for you, the toolkit that you want to share about falls into this category of recreation and is specifically video games. So tell us how is it that you use video games to help you in your emotional toolkit? So for me, video games tends to help me out emotionally. Uh, it's just, I want to give a ex specific example of this, that being, um, if you ever heard of it, Sonic the Hedgehog. It's a specific game uh, <clears throat> made by Sega, and, um, and one of the reasons why it is so good for me, uh, and this is going to tie into video games in general, why this is so good uh, for me is the adrenaline, mainly, like the and the ability to play a game and basically leave the world uh that's around me so in other words like being able to leave that stress as well being able to have that feeling of um hey i'm in this like magical place right other games do this too like pokemon or minecraft even uh, other games tend to do this kind of thing and being able to have that in a game like sonic where you're going like mach 10 is is just really cool and being able to play those kinds of games while like I said before, in a stressful environment is really nice just because um, like, it, I feel free from a lot of the stuff that's going on in my life. Uh, and also one of the things that really that I really get from video games is the music. Again, Sonic is a really good example of this just because uh, specifically, uh, I know Sonic Frontiers uh, just came out and songs from there such as I'm here and undefeatable are like such really good bops. Like if you're bops, oh my gosh, I feel so old. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, but really good music, right? So being able to listen to that music and being able to have a sense of hope in it. Uh, Sonic Colors is Reach for the Stars or Sonic Unleashed Endless Possibilities, same thing. And I'll listen to them on my earphones when I'm in, like walking through uh, the hallway in class or walking through the halls to get to class and like i'll even start singing it out loud with other others being able to hear me and it's like just i don't care because it's such good music it always uh brightens up my spirits especially uh the song i'm here again from sonic frontiers the new game uh just because uh it's a song about trying to uh well reach new frontiers there's no other way to say it uh, and for me, it's kind of like, I'm, this is my first year out of, out of home for college. So being able to, um, being able to have that opportunity to listen to the song and it's like expanding the new frontiers for me, going to college outside of home is a new frontiers for me as well. Um, of course, and then being able to play video games while also VTubing also. I am I am a VTuber model. Uh, yes, and let's being, cla yeah. let's clarify because yeah. there could be some people watching who have no idea what VTubing is, and so you are here today. You know, you're you're a real human being. You're not an artificial intelligence mm -hmm. creation. You're a real human being, but you're being represented mm -hmm. by a digital avatar right now, which is mm -hmm. what VTubing is, where you are mm -hmm. essentially you've created an avatar of yourself to represent yourself in video game land. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yes, of course. Uh, so my avatar is actually based on characters from Pokemon, mainly. Uh, the design itself is a mix of different like anime and and uh, TV shows, but the the universe that I base the character off of is Pokemon. But uh, I tend I tend to use it for just any game I play. Um, so and let me it, let me interject for a second. You know, Ben actually in the chat, you know, he commented video games. And I want to draw some attention to that because video games often get a bad rap. And, and there are some negative things about it. But a lot of times we think of video games as, you know, let's get the kids off of video games and participating in the real world. Yeah. But 
Like you, I have also had many, many college students share about the power of connection that video games have had, not isolation. So I think oh, that yeah. we can make a distinction between any and all tools that we have can be healthy mm -hmm. or unhealthy. But in this mm -hmm. case, you know, we're focusing on the positive things that have come to your life through video games. So mm -hmm. can you tell me specifically, I mean, you mentioned how it has helped you in this transition from being at home to moving on to college and having more independence and autonomy and, and how this has helped you. It's given you, it energizes you emotionally as well. So let me know what other, what other thoughts that you, what, how else do you think video games helps you in your life today as, as you're becoming, you know, an adult mm -hmm. and developing your own sense of self? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so let me first start off by saying basically my entire life as a kid was exactly like you mentioned previously. My, my parents would always be like, Will, why are you always on the video games? Get off the video games. And, uh, and, it's, and it's funny because part of the reason why I'm where I'm at today is because I was told to stop playing video games and basically get a hobby. And that hobby became make, uh, making videos on video games. So it was like this, um, <laughs> I see the connection there. <laughs> yeah, so there's always this, this fun irony when it comes to how I started uh, doing content. But back to the main question at hand, uh, as far as uh, generally helping me, um, just whenever, like whenever I'm, it, it's always been something I could do whenever I'm, whenever I'm down. Like I've. There's a lot of things, um, I don't want to go into it, into things specifically since this is, you know, live stream and all, but there are, there were moments in my life where it was very stressful and I didn't, and I was kind of like alone in a sense, or at least felt a sense of loneliness. And with video games, especially nowadays, we have things like multi online multiplayer. It's so easy to connect. Like a lot of my, um, a lot of how do I put this? Like a lot of the people I've met, yeah, sure, are on this on places like Discord, and that can be a very toxic place at times. Um, don't even get me started about Twitter. Uh, but, listen and listen, and, and to to but, be fair, to yeah. be fair, well, that can happen anywhere. Yeah. Those those yeah, yeah, things yeah, can happen course. can happen in person, online. Yeah. Just. But the but the the main point I'm trying to get with that with saying all that is that um even through that because I was able to connect with people through video games such as like I mentioned before Minecraft being able to connect like there I've built so many things with people through Minecraft and have formed a lot of friendships from that uh, one example is I built a massive tree house for someone because my friend loved uh, my friend loved owls so uh, so in a world where we were we were quote, well not living together in the sense of like you know, uh, but in a community together. Yeah, like in a community together, I built a massive tree house because I was like, oh, you know, owls, trees, and all that, right? So that's just like one example. Like you can uh, form things, and I've had, um, I've, and you can even go so far as to um, make communities outside of the games as well. So Sonic has a huge community. Uh, sure, people bash on it for being toxic and all that uh, as well. Again, something that is quite common just in general. Um, but you have things like artists, like I draw Sonic art, like all not all the time now because I'm busy, but I, but I draw Sonic art semi regularly. Mm -hmm. And I and there's also mu uh, music that people have made. And uh, if, for example, Sonic Movie One when it came out first came out and was showed. The, the fans were like, yo, this stuff is bad. Mm. <laughs> so even to the point where they where the whole movie was made 10 times better because the there's a community surrounding that game. So it, it also just so when people say that, oh, video games are bad. Like, yeah, that makes sense. Video games. can. Yeah, be I think bad, the I think the but, abuse of it, just yeah. like the abuse of exercise, yeah. the abuse of alcohol, the abuse of anything can certainly be bad. Yeah. And let me let me draw your attention to this comment that Ben made. My mind is so busy thinking about so many things that video games helps me to truly stop and take a break. So I think okay. I think that video games can can truly be helpful. So I think part of what we want to share today is that for many people, video games truly is a tool in their emotional toolkit. And 
Well, thank you so much for stopping by and sharing this because I know it's an important conversation to have and to dispel some of the, I guess, stereotypes that a lot of people have around games. But, mm-hmm. you know, all of that said, yeah. you, you were encouraged to also explore other things in your life and get a hobby. And it's also brought you, you know, connection in, in new ways. So that's that's interesting to hear as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much for having me as well. Um, again, just... For those watching, remember, if you are a gamer, do not worry if people tell you too many times to touch grass. Uh, Sure, you should at some times, but it is not, it it is not, like, you shouldn't feel um, like you're being bullied. Yeah, you you shouldn't get to you. And before you go, and before you go, I want to share your link if anybody wants to connect with you on YouTube right here. And of the tools that we've been talking about, these five tools... Your tool, again, relates to the second one, which is recreation. So thank you so much for coming by, Will. See you soon. Yep, of course. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. All right, we're heading over to have our next guest come on with us, who is Betty Vargas. Betty Vargas will be joining us shortly on on our chat. And while, let me see, while she gets herself ready on here... Betty, hope you can hear me. Let me know when you're on. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Betty. I just can't see you just yet. I am wondering what is going on with my video. No problem. Let let me know what you think. In the meantime, I will uh, touch base a little bit about our topic. Give you a minute. Oh, there you are. Hey, Betty, I see you. Thank you so much for coming on the show today, Betty. I appreciate your time. You're welcome. It was my pleasure. And let me give a little shout out. Betty is a champion race walker, and I'm going to share all of her links with you after our chat. But Betty, tell us a little bit about what is your favorite tool for your emotional toolkit. And then we'll get into all the wonderful things that you do and all of your links. But what's number one for you? What's your favorite emotional tool? Walking. Hey, I love it. I love it. (laughs) Absolutely walking. I walk when I have a problem that I need to solve because when I go on the walk, it the positive endorphins just kick in. And once I realize, okay, I'm good, my my breathing is good, my legs feel good, I don't feel any creaking in my joints, I'm warmed up. I'm safe in, in my environment, then it's, I'm just enjoying the, the opportunity to be in nature yes. um, and to breathe the air. I'm, I'm in full gratitude for where I am, being able to use my limbs. I, you know, it's just, it changes my whole disposition. It takes me out of the, the, um, the the uh, uh, area where I am just stuck, and you know, once I realize the beauty in nature and the glory of the universe, then it's just um, it's an amazing situation. And by the time I I um, you know I have gotten into my flow then the my mind just starts opening up and answers just start flowing and and then i'm in a point where oh my gosh i wish i had a re a recorder so i could just take all these thoughts and write them down but it's it's just amazing it's an amazing opportunity for me to um to connect con- not only connect with myself but to get out of my head so it's, yes. it's great and you see me here, you hear me and see me over here nodding and agreeing because I agree with everything that you said and I find it all to be true. For, for, you know, some people, for them, it's running and other forms of exercise, but that's that's not something that I'm able to do. But the walking and the seasons in my life when I have been really dedicated to it mm-hmm. have been transformative. I am jealous that you live on the West Coast and you are not limited by cold weather like I am here on the East Coast. 
But Actually, no, 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 that's not true. I'm in Northern California. Oh, and Northern, Northern California I have to take is, that back. I take it back. Yes, it's kind of chilly. <laughs> And actually, I lived in New York for almost 30 years. And so while I was competing, I was out there in the cold and the sleet and the, you know, the snow and uh, the rain, everything. It didn't matter. I was out there because I knew how to dress for the weather. And so that is mm. once you are dressing for the weather and it's not bulking up and putting on all these heavy clothes, there are clothes that are made specifically for that environment. And once I found those and, and wore them, there was no stopping me, especially uh, because I was competing. And when you're competing in a sport, you don't let the weather deter you. Okay. So. And, and you're right. And even when it is too cold, like right now here last night was freezing. I think tonight's going to be like eight degrees or some ridiculously low number. But inside. We just had an earthquake. Oh, okay. <laughs> Man, you keep one upping me, Betty. <laughs> so listen, I, your, your number one tool here, of the five categories that I've broken down the tools for our emotional toolbox, yours most definitely relates to tool number one, which is physical. And it is so important for us to make sure that we are spending time with our physical health. So I wanted to also share that you have a walking course come up. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? I do, I do. Oh my goodness. The, um, the course is starting in January and it, I'm just gonna read all, read all of my little benefits here. If, if, if you said that you don't like to run and everybody doesn't like to run. And it seems like there are so many people are saying, walk to run, walk to run. Well, you know what? I had, ch I have four children and they were all scholar athletes in track and field and they ran. I don't like running. So if I don't like running, I know there are millions of other people out there who don't like running for a physical activity. So walking is a great a, a great um, advantage or a great way to get some cardiovascular activity in without running. Um, and let's see, you know, every everybody's goal is not to be quote unquote skinny. You, we just want to be healthy. If you want to be healthy, walking is an excellent way to do that as a physical activity. And, uh, you know, I, I speak to menopausal women Walking is great for your menopause health and f health and well-being. Uh, this so if you it, the menopause belly that we speak about, race walking or walking fast is an excellent deterrent for getting rid of that that um, menop menopause belly. So there are so many different advantages to um, or so many advantages to walking. And then my program is involved in sharing with sharing the rules of walking because there are um, how to how to dress safety. Um, there's also uh, rules, um, uh, techniques, probably things you'll be sharing exercises that prepare the body for race walking. And um, yes, and uh, the technique, the uh, the specific technique for walking. Um, oh my and goodness. I just want to say, I just want to comment too. Like, mm -hmm. if you're if you're listening and you're not a woman in menopause, don't snooze on this information. You know, exactly. pa pass it on. Find women in your life. It could be your mom. It could be your aunts. It could be your grandparents. It could, you know? be, it could be you because it, every woman is going to every woman is going to experience menopause at some point in her life. She will go through this process. You will not get out of life without going through yes. this process. Yes, and going through that, you want somebody want somebody like you in our corner, Betty. Want somebody exactly. like you in our corner. And I wanted to post here that people can reach you on YouTube at Crazy Sexy Menopause, crazysexymenopause.com, also on Facebook and Instagram, your LinkedIn, and your personal Instagram and Facebook pages as well are posted here for people to reach out and connect. So thank you so much, Betty. I mean, I think of you often and, and I know 
Walking is really important and it really changes things for our emotional health. So thank you for your time today, Betty. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. See you soon. Bye. Happy walking. Thank you so much. Happy walking. Love it. (laughs) Bye. Bye. All right, there we go, guys. We have Betty. Our next guest just texted me that he got called into a work project. So unfortunately, I am. We don't have him here, but I actually do have a picture of him. (laughs) So Ryan has been on with me. We did a previous video recording where we talked about networking tips for college students, how you could be a successful college networker. But for today, you know, he he did actually send me what he wanted to talk about. And for him, what he wanted to share really was the practice of gratitude. So for him. Gratitude was the key thing, and this falls under this fourth area of our mindfulness toolkit when we talk about that. So let me pull this up here. He wanted to, oops, I'm sorry, that is the wrong one. Let's go to Ryan. All right, so what Ryan planned to talk about for for himself, of the five tools that we're talking about, it really is, and that is not correct, it is not tool number one. It is it is tool number four, this practice of gratitude. And I've shared about this too. You know, for him, it's so many things that fall in line with the practice of mindfulness, incorporating gratitude, expressing appreciation. And this can be super helpful, especially in low seasons, in times where you feel like you're going without or you're in lack. So the practice of gratitude has been transformative for me. So I completely agree with Ryan that expressing what you appreciate in life. And for me, even just taking a moment and saying, here are my top 10 things that I'm grateful for in this very moment. And sometimes it's even things like the ability to open my eyes today, the ability to get out of bed, because we underestimate all of the things that we are grateful for and should be grateful for. So let's revisit. Right, the, the topic for today is the tools that we have in our emotional toolkit. We spent some time talking about physical. We spent some time talking about recreation. But I wanted to add that creativity really plays a strong part in the second area too. So it could be crafting. It could be making things. It can be art. It can be media. And I know for Ryan, music works too. So all of these enjoyable things in our life fall under this area number two, which is recreation. I have a someone that I follow online. I think it's called Draw So Cute. And I'll practice drawing. I'm not super skilled at drawing. I'm very minimal skills, but I do these things and I feel amazing. Like, wow. So that's, that is a creative expression for me. For some people, it can be looking back photos uh, throughout their lives. I love doing that. You know, that's very sentimental for me and brings a lot of emotions. It can also be, recreation can also be things like comedy, finding funny videos or cute videos, like the things that you enjoy. So media plays a big part in this too. Media gets a bad rap, social media gets a bad rap, but a lot of it can be used for good as well. And the third, the third one is connection. Speaking of connection, I have Dr. Dwayne Wood has joined me here. Hello, Dr. Dwayne. And the third, the third one is connection. Oh, I think we're getting a little bit of audio feedback on your end. Let's see. Dr. Dwayne Wood has joined me here. Hello, Dr. Dwayne. Hello. There we go. Good. Hey, Diana, how are you? Great. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes out of your day. I know you're seeing patients throughout the day as an endocrinologist. And you're streaming and, I and hope you're... you can hear me, but I can't hear you right now. Oh, I can hear you. I can okay, hear good. you. That's okay. that's, as long as you can hear me. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can hear you. And so I wanted to, to bring you on, Dr. Dwayne, and ask you to share what is your favorite tool for your emotional toolkit? All right. So my favorite tool uh, is connection. And as you said, as you said earlier, um, I am a very interactive person and I love um, being with people. I love talking to people. And really, as humans, we are built for connection. Now, there are gradations of that. So there are some people who like to be more connected than others. But as a as a rule, uh, we are social beings. So we are social people. And so whenever I find myself in situations where 
um, I'm having lots of emotions, then my connection to people really helps me with that because those con connections can help us feel safe, right? Because we're now part of the tribe. Uh, they help us to express ourselves fully because we're in a safe space. It can help us deal with past issues because sometimes the emotions that we're feeling now are really not based on what we're doing or what we're in, the situation we're in, but something that comes from our past. And so being connected to people allows us to deal with those and it kind of uh, helps to smooth out some of those things, right? Once again, it gives us the self, self, sense of self uh, belonging and helps us deal with difficult emotions. There are times where there's so many things going on in my mind and in my spirit that I can't really sort those out. And so connecting with people allows me to do that. Now, a quick story about me. So about, uh, I know, 12 years now, uh, 12 years ago, uh, there was something going on in my life. And I called up a couple of my friends and I said to them, hey, this is what's happening. And we started meeting. Um, it was, of course, over the phone because we lived in different places. We started meeting every Wednesday. And so our families knew that at Wednesday at nine o'clock, uh, 930, whatever the time was, that is daddy's time. That is the time when we're connecting. As a matter of fact, they started making jokes about it, right? The different wives would make jokes about us uh, connecting. But my being able to connect with that group allowed me to deal with the things that were happening in my life, allowed me to deal with the emotions. And there were times where we did, I didn't even talk about the specific thing that was going on in my life, right? It was just the idea of having that group there so that I could work with them. And we just kind of just shot breed, right? We talked about sports and so forth, but I knew that that was a safe space where I could be myself. And once I was in that space, once I felt safe, once I felt confident, once I dealt with the emotion, I was able to then come out of that space and deal with life, deal with the situation that was going on, right? So whether it was work, whether it was other interpersonal relationships, having the connection gave me the strength and gave me the ability to be able to now come and deal with that. And so we can do that in, in large times uh, or large issues or even simple times. There are times when something's happening in the office and I'll just walk back to, because my wife works here, I'll just walk back to her office. And, and just being in the office and we don't even talk about what's going on, but being there and connecting or picking up the phone and calling one of my guys and say, hey man, this is what's happening. Uh, for me, that has been the way that I've dealt with and the, the, um, the emotional tool that I have used. That is great, Dr. Twain. I, I, I'm not sure if you can hear me, uh, but... No, I can hear you, but I'm reading your lips. <laughs> okay, wow, that's awesome that you can read lips. So, so yours, yours relates to this, this third area of connection that we're talking about, which, like you said... We need to talk to a friend. And I just want to add that sometimes it's also about talking to a counselor, right? Our, our friends, but also reaching out to a professional in the mental health field. There is absolutely no shame in that. And it can be face-to-face. -face, it can be virtual like we're doing today. But the importance of connection, because it also can offer us another perspective. So being able to have that is truly wonderful. So Thank you for stopping by today, Dr. Twain. I want to wish you a beautiful rest of your day. Thank you so much. Okay, so Dr. Dwayne shared with us a super important element in area number three, which is this area of connection. Talking to others, it can be talking to a friend, a loved one, a family member, a coworker, you know, somebody that we trust that has our our best that has our interests at heart, you know, there's somebody who really cares for us. But again, I just want to reiterate the fact I believe in counseling. I've done counseling numerous times throughout my own life. There is no shame in seeking a, a mental health professional to speak with. It can be a licensed clinical social worker, a psychologist. It can be on your college campus. It can be somebody through your work program. So definitely connection really truly matters when it comes to building a healthy emotional toolkit. And Another area in connection to add to what Dr. Duane was talking about is sometimes we need connection in ways of giving, meaning that we might want to be volunteering, helping others, or participating in nonprofits or charitable events or causes that we care about. Now, I don't mean that we 
don't take care of our own needs also. But very often when we connect in the ways of giving, you know, for me, teaching, mentoring, pouring into the lives of other people also offers us this huge perspective. So being able to connect really matters. And, and we, had, we had three of our guests share mindfulness, number four. You know, Lara talked about the ABC method. Go back and, and watch that if you missed that. And then Ryan talked about gratitude and Lori talked about writing. And I'll add the power of journaling to that too. There can be so many things. I love using the Insight Timer app on my phone to do meditations, affirmations. You know, our faith, our spiritual life comes into, into play in the area of mindfulness too. So, you know, for me, that prayer time, you know, that time that is sacred for me to connect with God. You may have those practices too. You know, sometimes we can even record our own meditations and affirmations. You know, we have the ability right on our cell phones to be able to do that, record our own content and play those. So there's so many tools. And then I want to talk about this last one, the fifth one, which is education. And, you know, I'm in education, so I really love this one, of course. And it really is about taking yourself deeper to learn about your emotions. Very often when we're beginning this journey, developing our emotional intelligence, there's a lot that we don't know. But the good thing is that there's a lot of great information out there. You can start by researching topics like emotional intelligence or even just understanding your emotions and self-help types of things too. Sorry guys, I am getting much better but I'm starting to feel my voice going. So there you have it. Okay, getting it all out. So that is what I wanted to share with you for today on this Wednesday during our midweek power hour here on the show. Remember to keep these things in mind as you build your own emotional toolkit. I'd love for you to comment and share what your own are. And my invitation for this week is to practice these things. Work on one at a time. You know, maybe you're going to find yourself in some emotionally loaded situations. Please try to implement these tools in your toolkit. And also check out the other live streams that we've done. We talked about deep listening with Michaela Ayers, right? Sometimes we think we're a good listener, but we're really not. I also talked about boundaries and the power of saying yes and the power of saying no. I shared some tips for delivering special occasion speeches as you might be getting ready to make toasts and celebrations this holiday season. And then most recently, we also talked about, is it possible to prevent holiday stress? Not really, but we can most certainly manage it. So if you're feeling the stress, check out that episode too. Please be sure to check out the other episodes. I do this from my heart. You know, these are tools that I want to share that have been powerful and transformative in my own life. So next time, next Wednesday, we're gonna be talking about family legacy. Always Wednesdays at 12 noon Eastern time. I hope to see you here. I'm going to be sharing one of my interpersonal communication students journey with his own family, creating a family legacy story. And you might be thinking about your own family as we close out the year. I also want to wish you all an amazing holiday season. Thank you for being with me today. Have an amazing, amazing Hanukkah and Christmas and celebrations throughout this holiday season. I will see you guys back on the channel here next Wednesday at 12 noon. Take good care, guys. <laughs>